Welcome! In this lecture, we will be discussing introductory ideas to the course that is inspired by and heavily directed by the conceptual physics textbook written by Paul Hewitt. In the textbook, there is no chapter zero, but I found that this may be a useful introduction. Firstly, why take physics? In physics, we learn to question things that may otherwise seem obvious. We think about those things. And we solve whatever problems we see within those things. Now, what specifically will we cover in this course? This course is a survey course, so we will cover many topics in basic physics. The first of which is mechanics. This is a large portion of the course. Then we will move on to properties of matter, thermodynamics, sound, and electricity and magnetism. The language of physics is described well by this quote. The universe is written in mathematical language and the letters are triangles, circles, and other geometrical figures without which means it is humanly impossible to comprehend a single word. This quote is thanks to Galileo Galilee. So we will review some basic math in this lecture. Firstly, the order of operations. P for parentheses, E for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. This is the order of operations that you've probably seen many times before. So we will review this very briefly. Parentheses is not really an operation, it is more of a grouping. So I should say it's not an operation from one thing onto another thing. It is the grouping of things. And once you have the groups established, then you will proceed through the rest of the PEMDAS, the P-E-M-D-A-S that was on the previous slide. So parentheses takes precedence over all other operators because it tells you how to actually proceed forward with the other operators. This is the first step. You solve all the operations within the parentheses, so you use the groupings to determine again how to perform the other operators. Work out all parenthetical groupings from inside out. Exponents. Work out all exponential expressions. So this comes as soon as you have identified the groupings, then you work out all the exponential expressions within those groupings. Then comes multiplication and division. Now remember that division is simply the inverse of multiplication. So they are really the same operation. So it doesn't matter which order you do them in, you can either multiply first or divide first, which is why I put them here on the same slide. Moving from left to right, you're going to multiply and or divide the relevant terms in order. Addition and subtraction. Again, moving from left to right, add and or subtract the relevant terms in order. Now, if you are solving for a variable, which is what we will do in this course, you will reverse the order of operations. And I will show you what this looks like in practice. So let's do a practice problem. Number one. Solve for the variable b in the following expression, 3b squared plus 6 equals 18. We want to isolate b, so let's begin. Subtract 6 from both sides. This leaves us with 3b squared equals 12. Move that up. Again, we want to isolate b, so the next step requires that we divide both sides by 3. And this leaves us with b squared equals 4. To isolate b, we need to take the square root of both sides. And whenever we take the square root, we must remember that the answer is a plus or minus. You can have a positive root or a negative root, because in this particular example, 2 squared equals 4 and negative 2 squared also equals 4. So our answer is b equals plus or minus 2. Practice problem number 2. Solve for the variable v sub i in the following expression. 36 minus vi all divided by 12 equals 7. So let's write that down. First, we multiply both sides by 12. This leaves us with 36 minus vi equals 84. 
Move that up. Again, our goal is to isolate VI. So our next step is to subtract 36 from both sides. This leaves us with negative VI equals 48. We need to multiply both sides by negative 1, since there is a negative before the VI, and we don't want negative VI isolated, we want just VI isolated. So multiply both sides by negative 1. This gives us VI equals negative 48, which is our answer. Practice problem number 3. Given T, G, and A, solve for the variable M in the following expression. T minus MG equals MA. Now, when a problem states that these quantities are given, namely T, G, and A, it means that we know the, uh, the values of them, even though the explicit values are not given in the problem, we are going to assume we have those values. So we treat them as knowns. So in this problem, we want to isolate M because that is what we are told is the unknown. We do not know what it is, so let's do it. We want to subtract T from both sides. This gives us negative MG equals MA minus T. As a quick note, when I have mg and ma, for example, that is simply saying that m is multiplied by g, and likewise m is multiplied by a. Let's move that up, subtract ma from both sides, and you will see why I'm doing this. Notice that we have every term on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side with a negative sign in front of it. We want to eliminate that, so we multiply both sides by negative 1. This gives us mg plus ma equals t. Now, again, we want to isolate M, and the way to do that here is to factor M out. Now, this is not in the acronym we saw earlier, but it is still a very useful step, an often necessary step. Now, we can divide both sides by G plus A. And this leaves us with M equals T divided by G plus A. This is our answer. So, in summary, in this lecture, we went over the basic course topics that will be covered throughout the course, we talked about the order of operations, and we did some practice problems.